Welcome to the Soul of Travel. Today, I'm excited to be talking with an uh, old friend and colleague from um, Los Cabos Tourism Board, Rodrigo Espanda. Um, I'm going to start this interview today by just giving you the opportunity to uh, introduce yourself, uh, tell us a little bit about your current position, and then um, kind of where you've been at in the travel industry that's taken you to this point. Well, thank you, Christine. It's really a pleasure to be with you and to talk to you and to reconnect after many, many years that we've been in touch. Um, well, I started in the travel industry um, 20 years ago, uh, a little bit more than 20 years ago. Um, I've been working first uh, in the Mexican government, uh, representing Mexico in the United States uh, and Canada. So I started uh, working for the Mexico Tourism Board in New York. Then I went to Chicago. I was in charge of Canada. And then finally, I was in charge of uh, North America for four years in the Mexico Tourism Board. And then in 2016, I was invited to come to this beautiful place that I have on my back, that is uh, Los Cabos, uh, by the private sector. And it was a unique opportunity to be heading uh, the destination in terms of the branding, the image, the marketing, the promotion, the product development. Uh, and uh, it's been true, true honor to do so. And uh, that's what I've been. It's my true passion, tourism. And I love to do it. And I love talking to you and, and you know, speaking about uh, in this particular situation, all what is going on. Thank you. Thanks for, for being here. I, I really appreciate it. And I love the perspective of a destination. I've talked with um, other tour operators and travel associations, but I think it's really interesting to look at the current situation in terms of a destination, but just tourism in general and, um, and kind of creating that awareness of how all of the parts of the industry really do work together to create unique experiences and to um, focus on, for instance, my passion is sustainable travel and transformational travel, um, really intentional travel. And I know that when you work hand in hand with the destination, you can really come up with and create unique experiences. Um, and when we were talking before this call, we were talking a little bit about um, how we see travel shifting because of the current climate and the kind of pause that we've had in travel. And um, one of the things that came up in our conversation, as well as um, some of my past interviews, is this pause allowing us to really reflect on where we were three months ago and where we are now and then where we're going in the future. So I don't know if you would like to address kind of what your thoughts have been on kind of restarting and, and um, being more intentional in that space of moving travel forward. Yeah, um, well, I believe that this pause, as you say, it's a positive one and it would have a positive uh, spin. Of course, it is affecting and is creating um, many, many distortions in the, in, in the marketplace, uh, mainly employment. As you know, tourism is heavy on, on the human capital and that's the, the most important asset that tourism has is the human asset and the human quality. And that's the reason that we really make a difference when people travel, because we connect each other, we reconnect, we know a little bit further about the culture and the history and the heritage of, of the place and or the natural aspect. And, and that's truly what makes uh, sustainable uh, tourism unique in, in that human connection and that, that natural touch with the environment. Uh, moving forward, I believe that this is a unique opportunity that we have in the tourism and travel industry to really uh, make changes that would really move into a better perspective, into a better experience for everybody. Uh, of course, sustainable travel and sustainable tourism should be the only way that tourism would have to be. Uh, that's if, if, we, if we are sure that sustainable travel and sustainable tourism is, is the way moving forward, then it would be better off for everybody. And, and I'll put specific examples on, on what it is. Um, if we are all now working towards offering a much higher up 
type of standard in, in terms of the uh, hygiene, the cleanliness, the sanitation, the quality of the food. Uh, and, and that I think it's going to be positive for everybody in the sense that if we travel, we want to make sure that there is a cleaning standard in every aspect or every destination that we move uh, in. Um, we believe that even is going to be in the short term more important the cleaning aspect than any promotional place. We would not want to go to any destination if you would not have the certainty that you would not get sick. So we as destinations need to move forward uh, in that aspect to offer uh, at the highest level the experience. And that standard I think is going to be positive. The fact that everybody now uh, in terms of the trend, we want to be in open spaces uh, with less mass tourism because we all want that. And I think that's exactly a, a positive element. Uh, we all move into a third one that I'll mention that is the connection or reconnection with things that are uh, more important for us as human beings. The fact that we have not been able to see our significant others, our loved ones, our uh, people that we, our friends uh, in so many weeks would make it uh, really to think uh, on what is important for human beings and why, in, and that is connected to travel. We travel to see those that we love once, so then we are appreciating more things that we tend not to do it. So those three elements, I think, are going to be very important moving forward that would be better off uh, in, the, in the total outcome uh, on, on the situation that we're moving forward. I agree. And um, I think that it's really interesting, too, for uh, travelers, um, in destinations, tour operators, all elements to be thinking about, like you were saying, what are travelers really going to be seeking um, when they do return to travel? And I agree, I think smaller groups, traveling with their families, um, being outdoors and in nature. And um, we were, again, talking a little bit about this, but I think it would be really helpful. And because I love the, um, the process of the telling of the experience that maybe you could walk us through for people that aren't familiar with the area with Los Cabos and the surrounding area. Um, what do you think an experience might look like when people return to your destination um, beyond, you know, food and beach um, and um, cultural activities? I mean, there, there's a lot, I think, of nature and other resources that people don't always know are available to them to access. What, if you were imagining, I guess, maybe a, a holiday in that area, what, what do you see people um, participating in? Well, Los Cabos means the capes. Uh, and, you know, because we have several capes, one is the one that I have uh, on my back, that is the, the land's end as we, as we know it. Uh, and, and the, the, the area it's on the deep south of the Baja Peninsula on the Pacific coast, on the west coast of um, Mexico. Uh, so if you would see the San Diego is all the way down, uh, um, 1,000 miles down is where we are located. And it is a unique combination because we are on the edge out of the tropical of Cancer. So it, it's a, a the, the geography, it's a combination of a desert, uh, the mountains, and the Sea of Cortez and the Pacific Ocean. And that provides a very isolated type of uh, complex geography where we, the Sea of Cortez, as uh, Jacques Cousteau called it, is, is the aquarium of the world. Uh, you see uh, all type of marine life. Uh, just on my back, you are very easy to see uh, whales jumping, there is a permanent colony of sea lions that live there. You see uh, turtles, uh, dolphins, rays, man rays, uh, do every, every, every type of uh, marine life that you can experience here. And in terms of uh, the activities that you would be able to do is you have precisely the combination. Imagine that in one day you can wake up and you see this, the, the sunset uh, on, on your left. Uh, then you have a very nice breakfast at an organic farm because even though that it is a desert, there are parts uh, right next to the mountains that are very 
fertile. Uh, so you enjoy this uh, breakfast in an organic farm, then you walk out and you go to the desert to have a unique experience in an e-bike, uh, in a trail or hiking, uh, exploring the, the unique uh, cactus types that are endemic in, in, in the region with one of the expert biologists that would explain to you uh, that why they, they are so many birds, even though that it is a desert, come to this uh, cactus type experience. You hike a little bit into, into the mountains and see some bird watching uh, in the trails. And then uh, you have a lunch uh, offering some of the uh, traditional organic recipes from the region that have been here for many generations in one of the ranches that have been there. And then uh, you go down and you end up uh, having uh, this, the, seeing the sunset in one of the, the jet or boat experiences uh, going precisely toward the arc that I have on my, on my back and uh, really combining it uh, in a very mild weather because we don't have humidity, so we don't have uh, mosquitoes. Uh, it's very mild because we're very close towards the, the, the tropical area. So uh, even though that it is a desert, there's no humidity, less than 10 days uh, of rain in a year. Uh, we offer a lot of uh, isolated uh, uh, small group experiences that, as you mentioned, and that we discussed, it's going what uh, people are going to be looking. So I'm sure that the, the same type of experiences that people would love uh, to come and experience in Los Cabos, we would be offering. Um, it's, it's just that this is a redefinition of uh, what it's important for us. Mm -hmm. I, I, um... I love that. And that sounds, I'm like, oh, yes, let's do that tomorrow. Um, but I love the idea of how engaged that type of travel does get you with a destination. Um, I've had the opportunity to travel many places in Mexico, although I have not been to Los Cabos yet, but I will. Um, but I, I love that every region is so different. Every region has something completely different to offer. And um, when we can really slow down and immerse ourselves in the nature and the culture and the food and, and all of those things, I think we, we end up um, just traveling so differently and creating a different awareness. And for me, um, transformational travel and being intentional about what is happening to you as you travel, I think is really important. And so I, I really um, am looking forward to again, this kind of being something that comes out of this time because people, when they set back into travel, are really going to want more out of it. Um, so I just, um, I'm, I'm inspired for seeing where tourism goes after this. And I know that we were both talking about too, people focusing on nature and wellness and that there's a lot of that to offer in the area. Um, and then another concept that comes up a lot or was really on the forefront of a lot of discussions was um, over tourism. And I think um, the markets becoming both oversaturated with tourists and providers. And um, I don't know if you wanna speak to how you feel things um, might be responding to that in your area and the positive things that might come out of it. Because I know right now, a lot of focus on tourism has been focusing around, you know, loss or impact, negative impact from in the past. But I think there's a lot of good that obviously is in the industry on a whole. But moving forward with, um, again, with intentionality, what do you think this, uh, the oversaturation over tourism, I think is disappearing. So what do you think will will come out of that in the stretch while while tourism kind of grows and expands again? Well, tourism definitely will grow and, and will recover the, the, the pace in the medium run or long run. Mm -hmm. uh, in the short run, definitely there's gonna be a complete uh, change. And even uh, as I was saying, in, in the medium run, the standards uh, are gonna be completely different and um, is gonna be a, a positive type of uh, outcome from what we are going for. Uh, I think in, in the, every region has different and every region has to find its right balance. Now we're gonna be forced to find that balance uh, because it's either you do that or you do not survive as a supplier or as a destination. As a destination, uh, you know, you need to make sure 
that the right balance between the experience is, is there. Um, I think the, the, the mass tourism in the way that we were experiencing, it's completely uh, over and, and it would need to be change. Um, the other day I was having this conversation and somebody was mentioning to me that no, I'm sure that uh, uh, over tourism will come back um, short in the short term and uh, I don't believe that it would and, and if, it, if it comes uh, I know that there are going to be uh, a segment of the market that will not be looking to have that type of experiences. It's going to have now a premium to be more on a, on a secluded, isolated, small group type of experience. And that's what I think is going to be happening. The fact that the restaurants, when they are opening, have to open with 50% of the capacity, with specific distances and with a much higher standard, that would force them to be better. And of course, there are gonna be some restaurants uh, in, in places that were not offering anything unique or high quality that would probably not be able to survive for uh, tourism and for the simple fact that in the short term we would not have the same amount of uh, travelers that would go around and they would be making sure that the experience is, is different. So I think that what we're facing is a, is a cleaning uh, type of process uh, for the whole supply chain of tourism towards a better outcome. We all would have to be more competitive. We all would have to be innovating in the tourism product and the tourism development uh, type of things. We are working towards that. For example, in terms of wellness that you mentioned is definitely a trend. We always have had a very strong uh, product in the wellness uh, aspect, uh, not precisely in, in the hotels that they also offer a unique natural type of uh, treatments or spa elements, but more wellness in the aspect of a healthy food, organic food, for example, as I mentioned here, is a super big trend. In the last 10 years, there have been a lot of organic farms and uh, the area is the number one producer in terms of organic vegetables uh, in Mexico, even though that it is a desert, the organic production of the vegetables uh, is really a must and it's a trend and, and now it's a standard in, in the destination. You go to the supermarket here and you find uh, there what says a local product and, and it's uh, lettuce or, or, or tomatoes that they have a level uh, uh, saying local product that is produced in the region. And that is definitely uh, very, very, very positive. Um, and what we will see is that people would be looking to do more exercise, um, would be looking to be uh, fit uh, in, in their element, not just outside, but inside uh, meditation, yoga, things that would tend, tend to uh, take you towards a balanced type of aspect in your life are, are definitely going to be uh, a, a much better. And, and we as destinations need to innovate and develop uh, a product and an experience that goes alignment towards that. Uh, and, and I think in, 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 the, in the long term, the element of uh, the viruses uh, coming or going uh, would have to make us all think of how do we are more resilient inside and outside, because uh, the viruses, uh, even though that they find a, a vaccine um, in two years, then they might, it might be that in three, four, five, or whatever years, there is another type of, of virus. Uh, and then we need to be sure that the experience in the tourism and the experiences that we offer and the balance that we have to find in our life, it's there. Yeah, I, I think that's really important. That's definitely a thing that has come up over and over is resilience and um, also kind of di diversifying your income stream, um, looking at how reliant you are in one, one area or another. And I think tourism on a whole is pretty adaptable because there's constantly trends, there's um, travelers as they travel become more resilient, I think. And um, I do think there's a lot of space for the right kind of growth. So I think that, that again, it, it does, as, as much as there is some um, negativity or, um, struggle right now. There's so much room for positive, positive growth. And I'm looking, really looking forward to seeing how that unfolds. I, I just think that there is such great potential to see what the future looks like in this industry. And um, 
uh, I guess, tying back a little bit to Lotus Sojourns and um, what I offer in terms of travel, I really always focus on connecting to the destination, um, culture, um, artisans, nature. Um, I'm really looking forward to, I want to spend some time camping and on the water when I come to Mexico. And I feel that transformation that can happen when we travel, when we leave the space for that to happen, um, is really powerful. And again, I think we'll be traveling for longer periods of time now. We will be moving slower. We won't be trying to fit everything in and running ourselves ragged. And um, and that excites me because that's the way I like to travel. So I always want to share those experiences. Um, and so I, what I was thinking about is some of the powerful experiences I've had. And I love to share that because I think there's a lot of people that when they think of travel, really they think of mass tourism. Um, that's the, the most well-known type of travel. It's the most accessible type of travel. And there are still a lot of people, even though I don't always feel that way because the people I connect with are really um, intentional travels, they're folk travelers focused on responsible tourism, sustainable tourism. Um, but I, I really love creating the conversations for people to understand what that looks like. And I know that you've had the opportunity to travel a lot. And I'm just wondering if you would be willing to share an experience that you had that was really powerful or transformational or um, just to give people a better sense of that real true power of travel. And I know that's kind of out there, but I think it's, it's really important because people, I don't think, are always thinking about that. Yeah, no, travel, I think, uh, transforms, I agree with you, the life of uh, people. And uh, we all, when we travel, we have seen it, we have had experiences that completely transform our life and makes us to see things in a different way or having a different meaning. Um, uh, I have had uh, several, uh, I don't know, when I was uh, young, uh, I, I was able to, to travel um, to Europe uh, when uh, Eastern Europe was just opening. And uh, that I think uh, was a, a, a true transformation experience in the sense of seeing the difference in terms of the economy, how uh, many countries were just opening and getting a, in a new reality after being uh, on, on the Soviet uh, bloc. Um, countries like Poland or the Czech Republic, Slovakia, uh, Bulgaria, uh, and, and so going all around that in that uh, years uh, was truly transformational because of uh, the difference in terms of the, the, the currency and the, the, the relevance of, of uh, really not being connected towards the, the Western world and, uh, and the, the fact that I was from the country like um, like in Mexico was truly a uh, something new for all the people that that I would uh, met, and then uh, they most of the time they have never seen anybody from Mexico uh, in 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 the country, and even though they would have some specific reference to to also uh, I was very young, and, and that it really uh, opened my 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 life in the way of that wanted to see more things uh, and wanted to, to understand better the difference between the cultures and the difference between of how the economies of different countries would be working and, and, and sustaining. Uh, and then uh, another one that I just had here that when, when I started coming, I was always, I've always been a diver. Uh, but when I came here and I was able to dive um, with the sharks and uh, without a cage and seeing it so beautiful, the bull sharks are, approaching and coming and seeing uh, all the contact with the nature and, and still today I think uh, um, I always like to, to joke that I miss my good friends the, the sharks uh, because the, they don't they don't bite the bite are those that bite are the sharks with uh, that are up here humans those those are the ones that are really cool and brutal uh, and, and uh, not those that you you dive with and they they have a uh, you know, a, a natural element that they respect. And uh, I make that analogy as a joke, but I truly believe. Yeah, I, um, I, I really think that's the amazing uh, a part of travel is it answers so many questions of when you immerse yourself in another culture about what other 
when you're experiencing other religions, other foods, other environments, um, it, it answers a lot of questions I think people inherently seek, but they don't know. And then it also creates conversation and, and even more questions. So it kind of puts you out on that path to be really, um, to just continue to look around and see and be more open and aware. And so I think that alone is really powerful. Um, I know that I always set out, like when I first put my backpack on my back and hop on the airplane, I'm like, I've got this, I'm in control of the situation. This is so good. I'm a travel planner, right? Everything's going to go the way I want. And the minute you land, like it starts kind of unraveling because eventually, you know, some, you miss some connection or whatever, but then as soon as you let go and you start letting the travel experience happen to you, then it starts offering you all these amazing gifts. And so I think that's one of the amazing things about travel too, is just receiving everything that's on the journey and um, that other, that greater understanding of, of nature and environment. And um, I don't know, I could obviously travel forever and talk about it forever, but um, <laughs> I, I just, um, I, I get so excited for people to have that experience, I guess. I just think it's important. And for me, it's important to showcase the world in that way. And for people to know that that's out there for them, if they are looking to, um, to seek those experiences. So, um, well, as we start to wrap up, I just am wondering for our listeners, if they want to, um, have uh, a way that they can connect with the destination, what resources you might share for people um, who want to know about, um, I guess, one, when they can come back to Los Cabos, um, how you share your, um, the progress of the industry opening back up in the area, and just learning more about how they can travel, what resources do you have, and if you have any um, any other uh, projects or anything that you want to promote or provide insight to, I would love for you to do that. Well, the, we have our website that is uh, visitloscabos.travel. Uh, there you would find all types of resources, uh, maps, guides, um, even we have a chat box uh, so you can chat with us, uh, with the team of Los Cabos Tourism, or you can just put a quest question and then we will answer. You will find everything in terms of new experiences. That is a project that we have been working on, uh, is the, the 10 new experiences that Los Cabos offers. And those experiences are from uh, uh, glamping, for example, that is a concept that we have created. Everybody has glamping, that is, you know, camping uh, with some good accommodation, but with a B, because we uh, combine it with bicycle trails that are some e-bicycles that you can go through. And then at some point you find a camp uh, that you stay there and you can watch the this, this stars in a unique, type of experience because this area is, is truly unique in, in the way of, uh, of, of what you can see in, 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 this, in the sky. Um, uh, so we have 10 uh, new experiences that we have developed. Many of the things that we have touched on that are transformational artists. We have uh, a program called Meet the Locals that what we do is uh, we offer unique experiences with local people that could be uh, bread makers uh, or cooks or uh, painters or some weavers or different things. So you can go stay with, their, uh, with them, uh, learn about what they do, why they do, and what is their passion. And we believe that that's, that connection it's always going to be transformational and, and we want to develop that. So we have a specific website just for these new 10 new experiences that we offer and we're going to continue developing more experiences uh, towards that and and uh, there you will find all type of uh, resources uh, that we would be providing in social media currently for example we have been running a lot of classes and a lot of training and uh, training for travel professionals or classes for cooking classes yoga classes through the social media, we have a hashtag for every day, uh, Tasty Tuesdays, and we provide on Tuesdays a specific recipe and a specific type of, uh, of uh, uniqueness that we have in the destination. And I, we believe that that's going to be a trend. So uh, we have a blog, we have many resources on the website uh, that uh, visit loscabos.travel. And uh, we have a section just for for industry and different sections for people that would like to find specific type of experiences um, 
that would go really more on, on the transformational aspect. And uh, with, with that, I really thank you for uh, being able to share my passion and travel. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, I mean, really, that's what this is all about is allowing the space for people to share why they travel and why this is important and why we feel compelled to really keep this industry moving forward and, um, and moving into the next phase that it's going to become. So thank you for sharing your insight with us. And I really appreciate um, you giving your time to all of my listeners as well. Thank you, Christine. True, pl true, true pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much.